Welcome to the Code Louisville organization. This video will get you started in Slack. In Code Louisville, we use Slack to collaborate between students, mentors, and the Code Louisville leadership team. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and pop open the browser. In this instance, I've chosen to use Google Chrome, just a preference. But if you're concerned about cross-browser compatibility, please visit slack.com and check your options. So in this case, you have probably already gotten an invite from the Code Louisville leadership team via email and most likely have already signed in. But I wanted to start here just so we were on par with you. So we've created this dummy email account and we'll log in. Before we do, if you don't save this to your favorites and you're not too sure where to go next time, you'll want to save codelouisville.slack.com. That's your direct link to the Code Louisville Slack organization. But I'm already there and I've got my info typed in. So I will choose sign in. For the most part, this is going to be your home screen every time. So when you sign in, you'll come here and there are a few different things I want to show you while we're on this screen just to get a lay of the land. In this particular instance, I'm signed in as a person called Jane Doe underneath the Code Louisville organization. And these are the channels that I'm a member of. And these are some people that I have the option to send a direct message to. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, the first thing we want to go ahead and take you to, though, is the profile setup page. So it's really important that we know who you are and what you look like. So that way we can be of more assistance during the in-person sessions but also if we see you outside the session um, so we can recognize you and who you are. So let's go ahead and get your profile set up. You can do that by clicking on the down arrow indicator here on the top left side of the screen next to Code Louisville and your name. There are a few different options that show up when you click this menu. I won't go into all of them. I will say if you are considering integrating any third-party software into Slack, please be mindful of the impact that could have on everybody else in your channel. And here's a great example. We're going to ask that you please do not integrate Asana into Slack. And the reason for that is anytime you check off a task or you make a comment, um, that will be transferred here. And with so many people, it can just get nuts. So please don't integrate Slack into Asana. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to get your profile and account set up. So go ahead over here, click that. This takes you to the account page. This first settings tab are some settings that you already configured when you signed up for Slack after receiving the email invite from Code Louisville. You can see any of these options if I wanted to see what was in them or what I could do, I would expand, for example, expand my username, that's me. I can change that here, but I'm not going to. If you need to change your password, you can do the same. This two-factor authentication is actually a little bit of overkill, so we've disabled it for the Code Louisville organization. But you can similarly change your email address your time zone if you are on vacation for a week but you want to stay on Eastern Daylight Time with the rest of us you can change that here and some other options below. The next tab is notifications. Please spend some time here and really personalize this to something you can live with every day. For example, um, you may have this Slack set up on your browser or you may have an app. So come here and make sure that you get notified only as often as you want. Um, so that way your experience is a good one. So take some time after the video and make sure your notifications are set up. 
And if you've downloaded the app for your smart device, I recommend you go ahead and do that there as well. Well, let's go ahead and go to profile. So for many of you, when you log in for the first time, this is going to be your profile. It's your first and last name, Jane Doe. But you can fill out a few other areas here, and I'm going to go ahead and say what I do. I am an aspiring front-end web developer. And maybe I'll go ahead and put in the languages that I feel comfortable in now. You can also enter your Skype username and your phone number. Just wanted to point out if you do do that, this information is publicly displayed and we'll see that in a little bit. So if you don't want people to know where you are on Skype or what your phone number is, please don't fill it out. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and save these changes. And the next tab is your photo. So let's go there. So when you first join Slack, you won't have a photo. You'll have this lovely crosshatch of the Slack logo. So let's go ahead and upload a photo for Jane Doe. So we'll go to Choose File. I happen to have one already picked out. Really lovely selfie for Jane Doe. Open. And then you'll choose Upload Image. And when you... It's going to think for a second, but it will bring up this screen and it's going to limit your image size and shape to a square. You'll see I won't be able to drag this anymore, but I'm just going to center this really adorable selfie. Choose crop photo. And it'll take me back to the screen we were just at and you can see my lovely doe selfie. So if you see a doe walk into your weekly meetup, you know exactly who that person is. You can also import a photo from Twitter as an option. So when you've modified any preferences or settings you'll be taking to the screen, it looks a little bit different from your home screen. But that's okay to get out of that. You'll just come over to the top right corner and click on launch Slack again. So this will take us back to our main dashboard. So we've set up our profile and as you can see, I now have a lovely photo next to my name, Jane Doe. And you can see that it takes me as default to the front end general channel. This is a shared channel with everyone in the code level organization. When you received an invite from the code level leadership team, you were automatically entered into several channels. And those will show up here on the left for you. The first channel shown here is Code Louisville Announcements. That is a place that the Code Louisville leadership team will put program-wide announcements for your reference. And you can see when these, cha when these channels are active, for example, right now the random channel is lit up. It's in this bold white, and I can see that there's activity there. If you're directly tagged in any message, you'll see a little one indicator it's a notification saying that you are specifically mentioned in that channel. But otherwise, I see that there's some activity on the random channel, and I might want to take a look at that. So there's the front end general channel. There's Git and GitHub, which is going to be very useful for the new students that will be learning Git and GitHub in week two of the program. So there are some resources there from past cohorts that might make your life a little easier when you're learning that subject. The next channel is Job Hunt, and that is managed by our Student Success Coordinator, who is a Treehouse employee, but she's actually dedicated to Code Louisville. So she posts really helpful uh, messages that uh, will aid you in entering the job market or things to consider as you're doing so. You'll also see that I am enrolled in the July 2015 Monday session. And that group is for everyone who said, I can meet in person once a week from 6 to 8 p.m. on Mondays. So when I switch to that channel, I can see there are 15 other people in here with me. And I can see that there's some conversation going on already. 
There's also a random channel, which is really just random stuff that's not related to code necessarily, but might make your day a little bit brighter. And a resources channel that's for useful resources you might want to share with your counterparts that may not necessarily be code related either. So that's it for channels, and if you'd like to see any of the other channels that are in the Code Louisville organization, you can click on this expansion, 11 more. And you can see the other channels. And these channels exist for the other cohorts and also for the other nights during your cohort. You can join these channels, but we'll just ask that you be mindful that those are channels dedicated to those particular students or those particular tracks. Close that. Down below on the left side you'll see direct messages and a very long list of people. So this is the area you can choose to directly message somebody. You can see there are over 488 people in the Code Louisville organization right now. So direct messages are private and they are one-on-one -on -one. and we'll go ahead and just send a test me message to Becky Steele by clicking on Becky. If for some reason this doesn't show up though, you can always hit the plus sign next to open a direct message and type in a person's name. And I typed in Becky and it's updated and I can choose that. Well, this is actually the first message that I've sent to Becky, so there's nothing here. So I can go ahead and say, hello, Becky, smiley. But I don't think Becky will get this right now. And the reason I can tell is because at the top, there is a gray indicator next to her name. So if this were lit in green, she would be online and on Slack. If it were orange, she would be away. But right now it's gray, so I can see that she's not online at all. Also, if I wanted to look at Becky's profile, I could hit the drop down next to her name and choose View Profile. And I could see that Becky set this up just like we did earlier in this video, some of the languages she knows, as well as the phone number at Code Louisville to reach her and her email address. So keep in mind, once again, anything you put in here is public knowledge and will get seen by the world. So we'll go ahead and close that. And one more thing before we end, as you are conducting yourself on Slack, you're collaborating with your other students and with your mentors, please be mindful that the conversations you have in the channels are public and need to be respectful in nature and anything that gets reported to the Code Louisville leadership team as otherwise will be investigated. So please just be respectful when you're on the public channels. Also regarding the public channels, your mentors will be monitoring those channels um, and they volunteer their time. So your mentors volunteer three to five hours a week and two of those hours are in person. So if you feel like you really need some help from the mentors and you tag them individually, that's okay. They're certainly happy to help, but please be mindful that they're volunteering their time under that limit. And it might be a little bit before they get back to you. So that concludes this video. And if you have any more questions on how to use Slack, there's some really great instructional videos on YouTube as well as Slack.com. But we're hoping this gets you started. So thanks, and we'll see you at the in-person sessions.